However, my question is this. If such a certification by civilian and military leadership were made following receipt of that report, could you have confirmed, implement a repeal of the don't ask, don't tell policy in the Marine Corps? Mr. Chairman, uh, Marine Corps is probably one of the most uh, faithful services you have uh, in our country. And if the law is changed uh, by Congress and signed by the President of the United States, uh, the Marine Corps will get in step and do it smartly. Note that this study, quote, unquote, does not assess the impact on morale and effectiveness of repeal of the law. What it does is ask questions as to how the military would adjust to repeal of the law. So therefore, we are now basing a decision by the President of the United States, the Secretary of Defense, and the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff based on a study that does not get to the fundamental question, which is what is the effect of repeal on morale and battle effectiveness? I guess my question is, is with this survey, will you be able to determine what the effect on morale and battle effectiveness would be, or would this survey tell you how best the repeal can be implemented? But there are two other aspects of that effort. The first one is, is kind of a town hall. They weren't called town halls, but they were effectively town halls at many military installations around this country, led by senior leadership. <clears throat> asking questions, talking to them, getting input. The second part is an online survey, which where all the service members can respond. You get on, it's a little bit like a blog site, but not quite. And they get on and you can respond, and, and that's not anonymous. So to answer your question at the end of the day, when the survey, when all this information comes to whoever is the 35th Commandant of the Marine Corps in December, will there be enough information to make uh, uh, to provide the chairman and the secretary of defense best military advice. My sense with the survey, having read it, is in, in addition to those other matters, sir, I believe we will. I believe, believe wherever the commandant is, we'll be able to give his best military advice on that. Do you feel that in this process you and your colleagues have been educated, uh, 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 significantly educated on the issue and on the potential impact, both the, the, the pluses and the minuses? Senator Reid, I, I think there's parts of this that we don't, we've not peeled back yet. Uh, and by that I'm talking some policy issues, some, some standards of conduct issues, uh, the issue of unit cohesion. Uh, we're not quite sure what the impact will be on an all-volunteer force, uh, especially a young force like the Marine Corps, predominantly young, 60 plus percent of our Marines are 21 years or younger. Um, and uh, so we're not quite sure what the impact is going to be. So I think that, that that's the important part of the survey. It's going to inform us, is to give us a sense for that impact. Um, but it's too soon to tell. The whole idea of the, the beginning with certification, in other words, that to be able to come back to Congress and be able to say, uh, we, we have thought through the policies, we've thought through the legal ramifications, we've thought through the monetary ramifications, the impact on things from like building, barracks, uh, base housing. Uh, we've thought through all those things. We understand what, what we would call kind of the whole uh, dot mill PF, which is the whole uh, horizon of, of things that, that will be impacted by this. That will be required before certification the way I understand the language of the bill. So there's a lot of work to be done once the results come in to work through that before, uh, before the certification can take place. And then after that, there certainly will be, sir, there will be training, there will be, uh, there'll be uh, a whole host of different aspects that we haven't even thought of yet that we're going to have to spend time working through. Well, I want to know if you think it's an appropriate leadership uh, position of the military if this policy is adopted. Uh, to uh, uh, not allow people to have different views and for them to get out of the military. Senator, it's, uh, if, you, if we step away from the don't ask, don't tell, there are lots of things that go on today in the, in the American military that, that the average Marine out there might not, might not agree with. But the one thing we have in the Marine Corps is discipline, and we've got leadership, and that's, those are the two things that are, I think will carry the day for us should the law get changed. But there's never been a, 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 a gag order 
and I don't anticipate one being put on Marines. We just don't do, in fact, I would probably say that one of the, one of the uh, rites of passage of being a young enlisted Marine is to be able to grouse. And, uh, and we do that, and they do that, and I did it as a lieutenant. So, sir, I, I, don't, I don't see that that would be an issue. And I think leadership uh, and well, discipline Do you condone that. that kind of comment if, he met, if it was an accurate uh, quote? I'm sorry, Senator. Do you condone that kind of uh, leadership or, or, or from this lieutenant general? Sir, I, again, I, I, I want to try to shy away from him in his comments, but I will tell you that from my perspective, this is, is, this is leadership. It's fundamental leadership and discipline, and, and uh, I don't see this as a racist issue. I don't see these as an, as an issue. Of, I mean, it's an anxious issue for the Marine Corps because we don't have the answers yet, and we will get those. But I don't see this uh, in the same light as it was reported. I think good people can disagree on this, and I think the military can uh survive uh, changes. They have changes before, but uh, as Mr. Tommy Sears, Executive Director of the Center for Military Preparedness, uh, said, quote, there will be no toleration of dissent if for whatever reason you disagree, whether it's religious conviction or personal objection, your career will in essence be over, close quote. Do you think that's... Uh, that wouldn't be a policy, a view you would support, would it? Sure, would you protect... Wouldn't you take action to protect someone who genuinely disagrees with the change but is willing to live and work in the military in accordance with that change? Sir, we, we will. I mean, there's no question about it. Uh, we're, we are, I mean, I'm going to brag just for a second. We are the most disciplined service of all the ones that you have. We follow orders. So the, the answer is absolutely yes, we will. The last thing we'd want to do is to be able to not have, you know, if this policy has changed, uh, the last thing you're going to see your Marine Corps do is try to step in and, and, uh, and, and, and push it aside. That will simply not be the case. Uh, there will be issues we're going to work through. I'm not saying put it aside. I'm saying respect somebody in the uh, Marine Corps who uh, didn't uh, approve of the change, has genuine moral or, or uh, principle of opposition to the change. Sure, that will that be respected? Is that career going to be over? That career, sir, unless, unless there's something that happens that I'm unaware of, that career will not be over. We have plenty of issues out there where Marines disagree, and they disagree vocally, and, uh, and you read about it in our publications. 